we present the stories of Sherlock Holmes. It was at the beginning of 1886 that I opened my surgery in Maida Vale and Paddington. The rooms were quite small but well equipped, and my practice began to flourish from the very first day. The place suited me admirably, for I was still living at 221B Baker Street, a brief half an hour's walk away, and I found the daily exercise most beneficial. I'd only been working there a matter of a month when, on a blustery January morning, the outer door burst open and a young, poorly dressed stranger staggered in. He collapsed, and before I had a chance to examine him, he died in my arms. There was nothing I could do but send for the police, and, as I thought I caught his name, for Sherlock Holmes. Holmes arrived by handsome cab immediately. Mm. He's dead all right, Watson? And from that wound in his side. A knife wound. An attempt at an upward thrust between the ribs straight to the heart. But it, it was deflected and still fatal. You see, I've merely removed his cape and jacket. He's lost a considerable amount of blood. You don't know this man? He's not a patient of yours? No. I've never seen him before in my life. And yet you say that he mentioned my name. Well, the inference would be that he knew who you were and of our association. Otherwise, why gasp out the message? Can you remember the exact words? Well, it's a bit difficult to say for sure. He was dying, poor fellow, but as far as I could make out, he said, tell Holmes that there is snow at Brendan Woods. It doesn't make much sense to me. I know we've had a severe winter and there's been a lot of snow, but why mention Brendan Woods? You're sure that he said nothing else? No, that's all. He just repeated the phrase and then... Then he died. I got hold of a couple of the boys outside near the canal and paid them to go first for you and then to the police station. Well, I'm very glad I got here first. Usually I'm only called in once the police have carried out their examination and ruined all the clues. Well, before they arrive, I should like the opportunity to study the dead man. You said that you had touched nothing. No, nothing at all. I, I've just examined the wounds, staunched the bleeding. Otherwise, the body lies where it fell. Ah, good, good. Now, to start with a thorough examination of the clothing... The police report on the body itself will be accurate enough. That can come later. Very well, Watson, I shall start with the shoes and work upwards. Holmes had about 15 minutes before the police arrived. And in that 15 minutes, he went over the body of the dead man, examining every part of his clothing. He scraped earth away from under the, his boots. He took threads from the cape that lay beneath the shoulders, studied the contents of the pockets, making a careful note of each detail in his notebook. Eventually, he was satisfied and was able to stand back with some satisfaction when Inspector Gregson of Scotland Yard took charge. You've concluded your examination, Holmes? Yes, as much as I could without moving the body. Uh, the man is unknown to you? Completely. Mm. All right, man. Right, sir. <coughs> uh, nothing in his pockets that gives any identification? Not a thing. There's a wallet, but it contains only sovereigns. Uh, that's right. A few florins and loose change, mm. cheap handkerchief, pen knife, bunch of keys... That's curious. Nothing else? No, oh, that's why it's so curious. It's as though the man was determined to remain anonymous. There are not even name tags on his clothing. Even the maker's name inside the collar of his cloak and jacket has been removed. Oh. That is most unusual. I think we shall have a job finding out who this man is, Gregson. Uh, well, uh, we'll do our best. Might I make a suggestion? Oh, what is it? Try the French police, the Surete. Uh, why do you say that, Holmes? Well, while his clothing has no maker's tag, the, the cut of the jacket is unmistakably French. The boots and trousers are not. They could be purchased anywhere, but the, there is a look of a Frenchman about the fellow. It's worth sending a description of him to Paris. Oh, very well, I'll remember that. Uh, thank you, Holmes. Is there anything else? I don't think so. I'd like to hear the result of the post-mortem and, of course, any other items of news that may spring from this man's murder. Uh, quite. Oh, we shall keep you informed. All right, men. We can go. Right, sir. Oh, uh, by the way, Gregson, have you made any progress on the Isle of Dogs smuggling case? Uh, Mr. Lestrade has <laughs> the matter in hand. He hasn't reported anything lately. I think he's up against a brick wall, if you ask me. No progress for some months. Mm. Well, I'd like news on that also. It's not too much trouble. Tell the straight I've been... I'll be calling upon him shortly. Very oh, well. There, come on, you men. Get him into the police van. Uh, 
Uh, good day to you, Holmes. Dr. Watson. Good day. Good day. Oh, Holmes, this is a fine way to start the day. What on earth does it all mean? I've no idea at the moment, Watson. There's insufficient data to formulate any theories, but I think we must not waste time. Uh, are you able to leave these rooms for the next hour? I have an appointment at noon. But as long as I'm back here by then, yes, I can spare time. Uh, why, Holmes? What are we going to do? Find out where this man came from. It shouldn't be all that hard. He's been bleeding profusely. Although hunched up with a hand over his wound, he must have left a trail that can be followed. And the police have now driven away. We can continue in an uninterrupted fashion. Uh, get your coat on, Watson. Bring a couple of stout sticks. Let's hope we shan't have to use them, but one never knows. Come, come. There's no time to lose. It's seldom that we have a fresh path to follow. Let's take advantage of it. Hurry now, Watson. Hurry. I did, as Holmes instructed. Within five minutes, my rooms were locked and we were out in the street. Once again, I watched and admired Holmes at work. No one would ever have guessed that we were not simply taking a morning stroll. He seemed not to be looking at anything, although his eyes were everywhere. Sometimes he would pause and with a nonchalant gesture of his stick indicate a spot of blood on the paving stone or a smear against a wall. We walked down Warwick Avenue and across Howley Place Bridge over Regent's Canal. There, Holmes stopped, and with a slight nod of his head, indicated some stone steps that led down to the water. At the bottom of the steps, a gravel path showed clear footprints. <clears throat> ah, there. See, Watson, it's mm. here that the attack took place. Note the marks. Mm. And here, here against the upright of the bridge. Blood. Mm. Yes, here is where our friend was ambushed and attacked. I should say by two men. Two men who had lain in wait for him. Yes, they must have known he'd be coming here along. So they concealed themselves in an alcove of the cement bridge. And they waited for at least 20 minutes before pouncing upon him. How do you know that, Holmes? Cigarettes. Look at the stubs and the matchsticks. Yes, at least 20 minutes. Maybe more. The natural impulse of a smoker would be to throw the ends of the cigarettes into the water. Yes, one of them could well have been a seafaring man. Look, that's the spit marks of the man who chews tobacco. The seaman's shed that. So we know he was attacked by two men. Now, the next question is, where was our friend coming from? Yes, I think that's fairly easy. You do? Oh, yes. The boots and the bottoms of his trousers were not only damp, but they also smelt rather strongly. Look, there's the opening of the drain into the sewers beneath the canal. The grid work is still resting ajar. Yes, it's all beginning to fit. Where does that drain lead, Holmes? We shall find out when we go through it, Watson. But, uh, 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 come. If they come nearer, let us bend down as though examining the earth by the water. Right. Yes, that's it. Now I'm uh, going to take my magnifying glass out and appear to be looking at the blades of grass. But watch. A small handbill, Holmes. Why? Don't ask questions. Just crouch there and wait. Yes. Yes, don't turn around. Don't move, Watson. We're being watched. There, from the top of the bridge. There are two men noting our every move. Yes, I can see them quite clearly in the mirror. They could be the two men responsible for all this. What do we do, Holmes? We wait for a while, and then we shall give them the slip. But, for the moment, let us pretend we're completely unaware of them. They're just as interested in us as we are in them. You know, this has all the elements in most unusual cases. Well, what's it look like? I'm trying to work out what happened. Uh, they must have followed the trail there. Uh, we should have finished him off proper and dumped the body in the water. Uh, the governor will say you made a right mess of this, Soapy. Me? Uh, why me? I did what you told me to. If you hadn't gotten that fight with them... We well, was told to stop him, weren't we? Plenty of ways of doing that without screwing him. And not doing a clean kill, either. Oh, I thought I'd done him in. It wasn't until we came back along here and I saw there was no body that I knew I'd missed. It can't be helped. I'll tell that to the governor. Anyway, them two is on to it. What are they? Plainclothes men? Detectives? Must be. We do. Keep out of the sight. Then follow them. Look. Look, there they are. They're straightening up. Walking along the canal path. Come on, let's follow Don't look round and don't worry about being followed, Watson. 
We should get rid of them quite easily before calling upon Mr. Woods. Calling upon Mr. Woods? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, Watson. You'll continue to take things at their face value, won't you? The dying man's message. Snow at Brendan Woods. Brendan Woods is not a place, Watson. It's a person. It's a man's name. Oh, oh I see. I never thought of that, but... Snow. Snow is the underworld's name for the white powder, Watson. Dope. Drugs. Brendan Woods has something to do with dope smuggling. That's why I asked Gregson about the Isle of Dogs case. Come on. Let's get rid of these tiresome followers, shall we? I was never able to keep up with Sherlock Holmes' powers of observation and deduction. His reasoning was always logical and usually correct. But at times, I found it bewildering. However... I had learned not to query his decisions, and so on that blustery January morning, I followed him swiftly down the paths of the Regent's Canal, through a labyrinth of highways and byways, until he had shaken off our two followers. Before I knew it, we were back at the same spot under the Howley Place Bridge. I think we've got rid of those two tiresome gentlemen, Watson, so shall we take up the trail again? In through that grating over the drain, I think. Come on. Now, this will not be pleasant, but we shall have to endure it. Oh, it's a haggish of the nose and mouth, my dear. Yes, I agree. Ooh. I'd have put out a cologne on if I'd known we should endure this. Well, it shouldn't last very long. I, I have an idea where we shall come out. Can you see what's in no, Not very well, but busy not. No, the light ahead. But look. You realize, Watson, that we're very near Paddington Station, and next to Paddington Station Goods Yard is a lot of waste ground. Well, is that where we're going to come out, folks? Yes, I think so, but here, follow me. I, I think that's a step up here. Now, careful, careful. Uh, 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 <coughs> uh, now, this, uh, uh, this paving stone above it has been moved. Uh, yes, recently, so it should lift up and slide over. I, I think I can manage it. Just stand back, Watson. <coughs> uh, that's it. Come on, it's quite easy. Just pull yourself up. Come on, Watson. Let me give you a hand. Uh, that's it. Uh, 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 oh, just as I thought. Yes, the courtyard. Look at that sign, Watson. Uh, Brendan Woods, Dragon Buttonman. Well, you're right as usual, Holmes. It is a man, and he must live here. Yes. In his house, in the yard, yes. Come along, let's see who's in charge here. Very rough sort of neighborhood, Holmes. You say, very near the station. What do you want? How did you get in here? You should have come to the front. Mr. Woods doesn't like strangers in his yard. We are the police. You must let us in. We need to talk to Mr. Woods straight away. Police? Well, I'm home, Mrs. Paddy. I'm, I'm just the housekeeper. I don't know nothing about what goes on in these parts. I, I ain't done nothing. Take us to Mr. Woods, and I shall be more inclined to believe you. Oh, well. Well, all right, then. Uh, come on in, then. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Woods, he, he doesn't normally see no one. He's, he's bedridden, you see. Has been for some years. Never leaves the house. And I don't rightly like to disturb him so early. Uh, early? Huh, it's nearly lunchtime. Well, I never go into him until after 12 o'clock. He sleeps a lot, he does. Here. Here are. Here are. Ah, uh, there's two gentlemen to see you, Mr. Woods. I think... Oh, my God. I shall never forget my first impressions of that room. It was large, but so cluttered with bric-a-brac that it looked like a junk shop. Facing us against one wall was a heavy brass and iron bed. Under the patchwork counterpane lay a frail old man. His head was partly covered with a white nightcap. His frail, bloodless hands touched at the grimy sheet about his neck. One glance was enough. The man was desperately ill. Mr. Woods! Mr. Woods! Holmes, Holmes, this oh, man's dear. ill. He's, he's hardly conscious. Uh, please, let me see. Well, what, what's the matter? He was all right yesterday. Yes, he's had a stroke. He's conscious, but can't speak. See, his hands are twitching. Holmes, we must get this man into hospital. Yes, yes, but what's this? A piece of paper by his hand. Finds what they would wish to keep. Golden orbs in reach of sleep. 
stolen orbs in breaches. Now, please, Holmes, this is not time to ponder over that doggerel. This man's desperately ill. We must help him, and at once. Holmes went into action. He immediately handed the housekeeper a sovereign and gave her clear instructions. A carriage ambulance was sent for, and the old man was removed. Holmes went over the room in great detail, and then took a hansom straight to Scotland Yard. He was lucky to find Gregson in his office. Uh, the dead man was French, all right, Holmes. Name André Brisson. He was working on what the French call La Fierre Passavant. A smuggling gang who used the Thames as a way of passing dope to ships bound for America. Just as I thought. Any more details? Uh, the French think that he was onto the London top man. His identity is unknown. He works under the name of the Governor. Son's latest report led the Surete to believe that he was about to break the whole line. He should have had information about every port, every dumping ground for drugs from Marseille to Liverpool. But we can't find that information. I think we may be able to, even yet, Gregson. Now, listen to what I have to say. It's vitally important. The man we are after, whom they call the Governor, can be caught. I think I know how he will react. His men are the ones who were watching Watson and myself earlier today. We can trick them, I'm sure. You were tricked. You made a mess of the whole thing. Attempted to kill Brasson and aroused suspicions. Allowed him to crawl away. How do you know that he hasn't told the police everything he knows? We did our best. We was just unlucky, that's all. Well, Sophie's right. And what could we do once those two turned up? I mean, the tall fellow in the cape and the, uh, the hat and, and the other fat one. You don't even know who they are, do you? You dopes. That man is Sherlock Holmes, and his companion is Dr. Watson. Holmes happens to be the best private detective in Europe. And you, you have put him on my trail. Now, go on, get out. Get out. I'll handle this myself from now on. It's clear that Bresson had an accomplice in the Regent's Canal, the rag and bone merchant, Brendan Woods. It's time someone interrogated him. Well, if you'd like us to call round... No. Uh... You? You never any more. You are dismissed. I'll clear out. Yeah, look here. Then what about our payment? You promise. All I promise you is a nasty death unless you get out of my sight this instant and stay out. Go on, get out. I told you. I'll manage myself from now on. I must put a stop to this straight away. Before Mr. Sherlock Holmes gets too well informed. Yes. I must move on it straight away. I have an appointment to see Mr. Brendan Woods. Can you kindly take me to him, please? An appointment, have you? Oh, uh, well, I suppose it's all right. Uh, very well, then. Come in. Uh, follow me. There we go. Uh, he's through here. He's been very ill, he has. you better not stay too long. He can't get out of bed. He can hardly talk. Uh, in here. Remember now, don't stay too long. You are Brandon Woods. Oh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you want with me? Who are you? Never mind who I am. I am here because I have good reason to believe that you have been conspiring against me. What do you know of the man André Brasson? I've never, I've never heard Don't of him. Don't lie to me. He was here several times. He called upon you and enlisted your help, didn't he? He gave you information and used your rag and boneyard as a ground to conceal things. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what, what you mean. Yes, you do. You know all right. It was very clever using this place. An I ideal spot to spy on all the transactions that we've arranged with the goods yard in the river. What do you know about La Fieuve Passavant? I, I, don't, I don't know what you mean. I, I'm an old man. I'm ill. You, you've got no right to come in here like this. I, I protest. Shut your mouth, you old fool. You must know all about Brasson. He was a spy from the French police. And he must have left certain information here. Information and a sample of the goods we trade in. What? What do you want? I want those goods and anything that Brasson may have written about our organization. Don't say that you are ignorant because I know you are not. We've had our eyes on you for some time. Because you were weak and old, we thought you were harmless. But now I can see that you're a scheming, evil old devil who is behind some of our failures. Well, there's always one way of taking care of that. See, this knife? No, no I, I can't tell you anything when I'm, when I'm dead. Then if you value your life, speak now. Take, take this. It's, it, it's all I can, can tell you. <sighs> Find what you would wish to keep 
Golden orbs in reach of sleep. Golden orbs in reach of sleep. What the... Ah, ah, yes. Golden orbs. The brass knobs of the bedstead. They're within easy reach of the bedridden man, half asleep. The brass knobs on the top of the iron bedposts. Clever. Well, we shall soon see. It's no good. What? Stay exactly where you are, hands on the bed rail. This gun is at your head, and I promise you one move, and I'll blow your brains out. All right, come in, Gregson, Watson. Uh, uh, all right, uh, right. Uh, this uh, is the man. Uh, Take uh, him away. Uh, Congratulate uh, me, Gregson. The rag and bone man has just caught the governor. Gregson, of course, was delighted at this sudden and dramatic turn of events. The place suddenly seemed to be swarming with policemen. The governor was taken away, and over a nice hot cup of tea served by Mrs. Paddy, the housekeeper, Holmes explained how he'd dressed as the old man and taken his place. Gregson was right, of course. Brasson did have information, and he was using the rag and bone man as a cover point. Yes, I saw at once the meaning of Wood's message. The golden orb was indeed the brass bed knob. I extracted all the contents. A pouch filled with opium and heroin, and also Brasson's notes regarding the people and places he knew were dispersal points in the drug-running business, operating from Regent's Canal to the Isle of Dogs. A very youthful case, Watson. Hmm. Well, thanks is Paddy, whom I took into my confidence. The latter has been successfully concluded. One can only hope that Brendan Wood's the bag and bow man makes a good recovery. <laughs> well, shall we go home now, Watson, or would you like another cup of tea? Listen again next Sunday to The Stories of Sherlock Holmes with Graham Armitage as Holmes and Kerry Jordan as Dr. Watson.